It's quite startling, the diversity amongst Jesus' first 12 disciples. Although Peter and Andrew, James and John were two pairs of brothers and all fishermen, the remaining eight disciples had quite wide backgrounds. Levi, or Matthew, was a tax collector. Simon was a political zealot and from Canaan. Actually, we don't know very much about the disciples. The Gospel writers give most of their focus to Jesus, what he did, what he said and taught, and where he went. I guess that's because the emphasis of the early church was on following Jesus and less about what everyone else did in response. We read that Jesus was often surrounded by crowds, but not so many were dedicated enough to be described as disciples. We read most about the twelve disciples whom Jesus sent out ahead of him. Indeed, they are often described just as the twelve. But by the end of Jesus' three-year ministry, Jesus and the twelve had gathered round them 120 disciples. There were many women amongst their number too. Before Jesus left them and returned to his heavenly Father, Jesus prayed that his disciples would be one together, like he and his Father were one, united, supporting each other, together. It was often a struggle for them to be united, especially when they were under pressure from the authorities, both religious and secular. It was a struggle to remain together when strong-willed characters, like Paul, felt led to head out and tell other communities about Jesus. What was it about Jesus and his disciples that led to so many people gathering around them? First around Jesus, then around the twelve, and then around the hundred and twenty. Within a few months of Jesus' resurrection from the dead, the early church numbered three thousand people. It continued growing, even though there was significant opposition. I will speak more about this in my next talk and in the coming weeks.